and welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are, as always, your host, Arne and Carlos. And a while back, we <laughs> asked for questions for uh, a few Q&As, and it's really cool because we always get a lot of unexpected questions, things that uh, we weren't expecting, and it's cool to answer them, and uh, that way you guys get to know us a little bit better, better for each Q&A. So we're going to read out some questions and we're going to see what we want to answer. And, and you know the questions already? or No, I haven't read them. I've got okay. them here. Uh, because I don't know. No, I can, I can read a few. Okay. And uh, as always, uh, diplomatic as we are, you know, the things we don't want to answer, we will just not answer. <laughs> or maybe answer the things we don't want to answer. I, we could talk around them or we could answer something completely different. Let's try, so, try, see uh, what happens. See what happens. Question. Okay, so first uh, question is from uh, Maghuin Beg, uh, who asks, actually it's three questions. Uh, what is the project you're most proud of? Where, is the world, where in the world would you most like to visit as guest teachers? And is there a craft skill you would like to try? Yeah. So we've got three questions. First so one, First question, most, most, proje proud, most project. proud of project. Um, Oh, which, which one do we pick? Like, I'm, very, I'm kind of proud of the collection we did with Origami when we were in the fashion yeah. industry because that gave us like prices and it ended up in the museum. That's and very, it, very much It proud. also came as the trends for mm. two years after that yeah. we made it. I love the collaboration kind of, with Comme des Garçons and the Space Invader sweater. That because was, that was also something like, that was huge. Yeah. If I'm going to go to my personal uh, accomplishments, you know, things that I am uh, very proud of. I remember when I was nine years old and I was uh, in camp mm -hmm. <laughs> in America. I went to camp in New Jersey for boot a summer. Camp. No, not no. boot camp. <laughs> not at nine years old. At nine years old, you get to go horseback riding and oh, playing with yeah. other kids and, uh, and you get to do crafts. And I remember I signed up for a macrame class. And I learned how to do macrame, and I made um, one of those things to hang plants for my parents. Really nice. So that's that's my first uh, accomplishment that I was very proud of. <laughs> how about you? The first one. Oh no, not the first one, but a, a project that is not related to our career as uh, designers. <clears throat> what could that be? Your abba scarf, maybe. My abba scarf. Now that was easy. Maybe. Maybe the. F my first uh, Pash book sweater. Oh, because Pash. there's a designer from Norway who had he did hot couture in Paris and he designed a sweater for the Norwegian arts and crafts community or the organization called Husfriden. And that sweater was this was in the 80s. And that sweater was kind of hard to make. Mm. Everybody wanted it, but a lot of people didn't dare because there was a special like a, a squared neckline and it was increasing in the side seams with, or the, in the sides with a lot of pattern and I made two of those. Oh. I was quite proud yeah. because I made, made it. Okay, let's go to the next question. <laughs> it's still from the same person, uh, Mag Huin Beg. Uh, where in the world would you most like to visit as guest teachers? Well, we're lucky that we do get invited to many places and we kind of tick them from our uh, bucket list. Uh, as they go. Uh, we have uh, an upcoming uh, cruise to New Zealand. New Zealand has been on our bucket list mm. for a very long time and next year, uh, so 2020 in March, uh, we will be going to New Zealand and uh, we're very much looking forward to that. We're also going to be going back to Australia. Mm. Uh, I have South Africa on my bucket list as well, mm -hmm. places I really want to go to. Um, I've been there. Yeah, that's the one place where I haven't been that you've been. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but what, where, what I really want to do one 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 day, I really want to do this. That is go to America and go to one of the the, the reservations, mm -hmm. like where the nat for the Native Americans, because I have this dream going to a, some of the Native Americans to learn and learn something, something, and mm -hmm. maybe stay there for a while. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that's my dream. But the question is, how, uh, where would you like to go as guest teachers? Now you're wanting to go as a guest student. Okay, so... Yeah, no, but yeah, but of course, of course, yeah. Well, it can go both ways. Of definitely. We can teach and we can learn. Definitely. No so, problem. So, yeah, I'd love to learn some <laughs> Native American crafts as well. That's, that, what, that's that on be, my bucket list. Yeah, things like weaving and... Uh, yeah. uh, the pearl. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. Amazing, yes. 
Yeah, and that, oh, actually, we just yeah, answered okay. the, the last question. Is there a craft skill you would like to try? So yeah, anything, anything uh, that is Native American related to beads or weaving would be amazing to learn. And there's a lot of different, like in Norway, we have a lot of those red listed things. Yes. There's like these different arts and craft things that are red listed. So we have to explain, explain what a red list is. Yeah, because is. nobody do it anymore. So they're dying. So they're put on an emergency list for uh, survival. I mean, it's like... If, it's, if, if, if a craft is in danger of dying out, it goes on a red list. And, yeah. then and every area in Norway has their own red listed arts and crafts things. And that's also something we really want to look into. Mm. There are some, like a knitting technique, which we never tried, which is on that list, which we want to learn. Mm. Amongst a lot of other things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay, next. next question goes to, or comes from Diana Campbell. Uh, she writes, I always have difficulty with long tail cast on. Uh, I never seem to use enough tail to cast on. I always have to take my cast on off and begin again. How can I know how much tail I need to cast on all my stitches without, without wasting yarn? Oh, okay. Oh, Thank I, you for your response. I was going to say, you know, when in doubt, add more. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> I'm a, mani ma a maximalist at heart. So yeah. I always say, when in doubt, just add more. Uh, actually, so we don't we don't know because we just start casting on. Sometimes you have more than you need, but then you need the rest of the tail as a stitch marker because yeah. you just move it up while you knit. So sometimes we don't have enough. What we do then is we go to the, like some. If you start on the inside of the ball, you can go to the outside or opposite, and you take a piece of yarn and you just make a knot and you continue. So you have just two ends you have to sew in. So you don't have to rip everything off mm. up if the tail is not long enough to just add some extra yarn. Okay, that's good. Usually I just make sure I have enough and uh, I use whatever is left over as a stitch marker. Marker. That way I don't actually feel like I'm wasting the yarn even if I do mm. have to but cut But you don't have to again. unwrap. If, if, if no. it's not enough, don't unwrap I it. Hate just t take a piece of yarn from the other yeah. end of the ball and continue. I, have, I hate having to start over again. I hate unraveling and I will not do it unless there's no other choice. Mm. A lot I'll of find times a, you don't have No, to. I'll find a way to cheat, cheat to do it, <laughs> to not unravel. That's... <laughs> <laughs> she thinks it's fine. Okay, so uh, next question comes from Frank Coco Scurry. Uh, again, it's two questions. Question number one, how many books do you have? And question number two, no. I would like to know what question would Arne ask Carlos and the other way around if they have to ask each other at Q&As. Okay, so let's start with the books. Uh, the qu do you mean like how many books we actually have in this house or how many books we've made? So if it's how many books we've made, we've done 10 books. Mm -hmm. How many books we have in this house is, is many, 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 many thousands of books, there's, I'd say. There's always a book you need. Like yeah. when we go traveling, we go to the bookstores and the secondhand stores and there's always books. And yeah. now like this year, we, again, we went to Florence to, uh, to go to the, what you call that? The, 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 the trend show where they show yarn and new mm. colors and stuff. And every year they have like this flea market and there's old clothes, it's jewelry and it's books. And every year we find books we need. Mm. So there's always some books to bring home because I like to look at books instead of going on, on, the, on the internet. Like I think it's really hard to read on the computer because you scroll down and it goes like this and my eyes is going all over. So I like to. Yeah. And about re and the other one about the question, what question would you ask me and what question would I ask you if we had to ask each other at Q and A's? I don't know because I know everything about you. I know everything. So what? So what? Uh, nothing. <laughs> How are you feeling? Are today? you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> you see. <laughs> I want to know if you're okay, and you want to know if I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. There you go. How, how am I feeling? Are you hungry? Are you okay? Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, how are I'm you? I'm fine. Hungry? No. Not Would you now. like a cup of tea? No. 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 Okay. Coffee? No. Not now. How about some cakes? No. I'm fine. Marshmallows? <laughs> I don't know. What's uh, the pasta with seafood? Oh, that's the question you're asking me. <laughs> oh, okay. I have to go. Sorry, I need to go cook now. He wants pasta with seafood. Okay, next. Uh, oh, okay. This is a great one because I've actually been talking to you about this recently uh, when I touched your hands. Annalise Kroman uh, says, and hi, Annalise. Uh, we remember you from Seattle. Yeah. Um, 
She says, greeting from... Andomsk. Yeah, greeting, yes, yeah. Uh, Annelise. <laughs> Uh, greetings from snowy <laughs> Seattle. This is a little bit of a weird question, uh, but I have the problem of my hands getting very dry during the winter months and my yarn snagging on my hand, uh, tiny hand na hang nail while knitting. I do use hand cream, but it doesn't seem to help. Do you have any tips for keeping your hands fingers snag free? Thanks. Well, we have that problem also. Yeah. Like sometimes if we knit a lot, I, I sometimes we actually get get really dry <clears throat> and. Sometimes when you knit, you actually can see see that you're you're making the yarn kind of woolly, or it's like be careful with the Oops. <laughs> don't burn the kitchen. Mm. No, now sometimes you actually you 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 see that the yarn is changing; it gets more hairy because mm. of your, your dry fingers. Mm. What we do normally is we use that it's kind of, it's called spenul. Is <laughs> It's, it's something that you use on the, the farm cows. when for you milk the cow. You actually, <laughs> after milking the cow, you take that uh, cre white cream and you s put it on the, um, what do you call that? The udder. The spen, the, eh? Yeah, the udder. Huh? The udder. Udder? Udder? Yeah. Udder. Yeah, the Wait, yeah, the tits. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put on that spenul, and spenul is good for ev mm. everything. So cow we cream. use uh, cow cream. <laughs> <laughs> Here is the farmer coming out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it works. Mm. And if it works, it works. So go get yourself some cow cream, and uh, you'll be good. Was no, okay. I'm doing this today. You never let me read when, I, when you've got control mm. of the questions. Okay, so we answered that, right? Mm. Okay, next question. Angelina Lafave. She asks, do you ever sleep? Uh, what are the single best and worst things about traveling for each of you? What uh, plants do you have for your garden this spring and summer? How old is Freya? So, mm. you know, these one questions turn into multiple questions. Freya is seven. Seven years old seven in years April. Old yeah. In April. Do we ever sleep? Yes, we do. Uh, mm. I need at least uh, seven. To eight hours of sleep. Mm, I don't sleep much. I'm. I think I'm getting more and more like my mother mm. because when she got older, she didn't sleep much. I wake up around sometimes around four o'clock, mm. and then I just had to go to the kitchen and make coffee and I can knit or crochet or. But our principle, we live by the principle of going to bed early and uh, rising early. So uh, I'm in bed latest at. 10 o'clock at the latest but not uh, in summer in summer huh, no but in summer we don't need to sleep as much we I sleep need to more sleep, in winter yeah i need to sleep about seven to eight hours in winter in summer i'm probably okay with five hours maybe four uh it gets doesn't get dark so you kind of have more energy uh what are the single best and worst things about traveling for each of you for me, the best thing about traveling is getting to uh, discover new cultures and getting to meet uh, lots of uh, amazing, exciting uh, people mm -hmm. uh, of a completely different culture and then exchange uh, our points of view on things. I think that's always uh, and some, fantastic. And also sometimes like when you live like we do, we don't see people that much mm -hmm. because we don't have so much, we don't have any neighbors, like not so many neighbors around that we have contact with. Mm -hmm. and. It's like when we go, when we travel, that's when we meet more people. Yeah. So that's also nice. And then the worst thing about traveling that much, I mean, number one, we're away from our home. Uh, and uh, we miss Freya, the dog, of course. And uh, when we come home, usually we have about that much work that is piled up because we haven't been working at things that we need to work at. I think at. that's the hard part because when you travel, you you can think a lot, so you can actually finish what you think about when you come home, but it's really hard to work when you travel. And also, when you go away for a long time, I think living in a suitcase is oh, the hardest the thing. And especially if you try to do something, you don't have all your stuff around you. Yeah. That's also very frustrating sometimes. It is, yeah. So, um, and then for the yeah. plants, about uh, our garden plants this year is starting up a kitchen garden. Uh, so we're hopefully going to be able to do that this year, uh, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Make uh, more insect hotels? More insect hotels because we want to have our garden full of bees. I think I moved this a little bit because... Okay. Not do we have time for a few more questions? questions? I think we do. Um, Mary Schartner says, <coughs> I dearly love your perfect fur isle sock yarn. Will there be more colors coming out? Maybe some black, gray or maroon themes. 
Uh, there will be more co more regular colors uh, coming out for sure. Uh, we'll see yeah. about the black, gray, or maroon themes. I it depends on the mood isn't that, that we're in. Do we haven't we done that? Mm, no. No. Yeah, we have. Mm. We have oh, okay. we, we made a collection inspired. Of Apparently, there is something coming. Yeah. I don't remember. We have something inspired of the Sami. Oh yeah, now I remember. The Sami. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's something coming yeah. in uh, kind of those themes, but not really. Because <laughs> it's Arne and Carlos, there's always going to be a pop of something. But kind of. We're always going to find a way to put a pop of color in something. I but mean. I think we have made, we made, the last one we made has a little bit fewer colors, so it will be a little bit different from the others. So Devin O'Connor says, any advice for picking color palettes for color work with many colors? For projects with more than three colors, I struggle a bit. Mm -hmm. I think that your problem and a lot of people's problem when it comes to picking colors is you think too much and you overthink. You're probably one of those persons who is in the yarn store and you're just putting these colors against each other and you're going insane because you really can't mm -hmm. figure it out. And the more colors you put, the more confused you get because you're overthinking. My advice is, if you're gonna do more than three colors, just pick the colors you love. That's mm. my advice. Whatever you love, just take that and it will be okay, I promise. I think there's another one which is really good. Like, if you've seen, did we do a video on the garter stitch blankets? Yeah, mm -hmm. we have done the garter stitch link in profile. <clears throat> Actually, if we, we do all the scrap yarn things like for the garter stitch blankets or we do the, the flowers, the crochet flowers, when you pick colors like that, just pick whatever it is. You can actually get color combinations mm. that is interesting for other projects. Yeah. So sometimes if we don't have any ideas, we, we can go and look at all these crochet things or mm. knitted things we have made of leftover yarns because in these things there are always some interesting Or take a picture of something you love. Take a picture of a landscape that you were, you know, like a beautiful thing you see out your window and mm. just pick colors from that. or. If or you have a little art. aquarelle or a work of art that you enjoy, mm. take colors from there. There's many ways to do it, but do not go to the store thinking you're going to be able to pick five colors that fit perfectly because your, your mind is going to really uh, play games with you and is going to really frustrate you. That's not the way to, mm. to do this. Uh, let's go on. Uh, Deborah Estrada asks, uh, oh, another one. Uh, what do you recommend for hand care to keep from getting sore, stiff, and other afflictions from knitting, cow cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you know, we like the, since we knit this Norwegian way, it's also very relaxing because it's also called ergonomic knitting. We mm. heard the way we knit in Norway because we are more relaxed. We don't have fingers up in the air or we don't move around like this. It's always down behind the work, relaxing. Mm. So we don't have huge problem no. with stiff skull shoulders and fingers and okay but she's talking about sore dry hands cow cream cow cream <laughs> so grace robinson uh, asks in crocheting the beaks for your birds are your terms for crochet in british terms or u.s terms u.s terms uh we love oh we love both of you enjoy your sunday tutorials and can't wait for <laughs> you, you to return to the u.s thank you so much for all your help Lovely to uh, have gotten your question, Grace. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, uh, in the book, the terms are in US terms. And uh, after doing the beak, because you know, a lot of times we do a book and then the book kind of gets to live its own life and then we don't think about those things anymore. But sometimes we do develop the projects more. And uh, mm. last year, uh, we needed a few birds and they were going to be uh, as Christmas decorations. And we were kind of uh, you know, in Norway, maybe you do this in the US too, in Norway you get oranges and then you put cloves in the oranges and then you put red ribbons on them and you hang them and it's kind of very Christmassy and it's nice because of the scent. Um, and we were thinking, why don't we use, because a clove looks like a beak, so we got um, a, a clove and we kind of put it in with some crazy glue between two stitches. Mm. in the, And then you have a really nice beak that is scented and is really, really lovely. Yeah. If so, not, you do the crochet. If not, you do the crochet and in US terms. Okay, do we have time for a few more questions? Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> Stacy Kennedy Hanno. Uh, hello from California. Thank you for teaching me to knit. I love your show and seeing your home. Can you talk about what needles I should buy? You two are great and so positive. I really enjoy your demeanor between you two. I would love to see more of your home, Lake Garden Town. Thank you. Okay, Stacy. So needles. Uh, we are a big. We're big fans of the Prim 
uh, ergonomic knitting needles. We really think they are really cool and uh, very good. Mm -hmm. The circular needles are our favorites. Uh, the prim needles are triangular and then they kind of round off in a little nice round tip. Uh, they're actually very comfortable mm -hmm. to hold and uh, work very well for ergonomic knitting. They're also white, so it helps you. Um, if you have dark colors and you knit in the evening, maybe with bad lighting, it's really nice. Yeah, and then the, I love the fact that the cord is in metal. It's a metal cord, so it doesn't, you know, it, it's always, <laughs> it always gets back to its shape. It has a memory. So check it out. It's available in uh, Europe and in the United States, and it's P-R-Y-M, Prim. Uh, okay, I think this is all we have time for today. Yeah, because now this is so warm. Oh, okay, so... I think I'm getting... Maybe I'm getting old or it's warm. <laughs> okay, so Arne is warm. It's time for us to uh, say goodbye. Uh, remember, we have uh, videos every single week. So 52 videos every year. Yeah. Uh, always on a Sunday at uh, 6 p.m. Central European time, which is 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. However, the videos are there forever, so you can watch them anytime you want. And uh, we don't mind if you've been watch our episodes. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please uh, make sure to become a subscriber and you'll enjoy being part of the very large Arne and Carlos family. Uh, so please do that. Give our videos a thumbs up if you like them. And remember that the best way to stay in touch with us and to follow us and make sure that you're always 100 up to date is to go to our website at arnacarlos.com and sign up for our mailing list. So Arne, you're going to go take that sweater off. I'm going to go I make you some pasta with shrimp. Yes, please. Uh, since you have been <laughs> thinking about it since you mentioned it uh, 20 minutes ago. And we will see you guys uh, in one week's time. Thank you so much Thank for you. watching and we'll see you again soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I think it's the climate change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or these big lamps facing us right now. <laughs>